Coming up, the Terriers travel west to take on the Michigan Wolverines. Defenseman Brandon Hickey takes us to school. And power forward Jordan Greenway gets physical as we drop the puck on this edition of BU Terriers All Access. A beautiful fall morning and the BU Terriers are on the move. The team is boarding a charter flight and headed west for a weekend showdown with the Michigan Wolverines. Anytime we get together with Michigan, they're great games. I mean, you know, we certainly look forward to playing them, and I know they look forward to playing us. You're talking about two of the most storied college hockey programs, and, you know, usually it's great entertaining hockey when we get together. Let's go, let's go! Move it! It may be an away game for the Terriers, but for some of the guys, it's kind of like a homecoming. The USA Hockey National Team Development Program is based near Ann Arbor, and eight current Terriers came through the program when Chad Chris, Jake Ottinger, and John McLeod were in the program. They lived with local families, so a great part of this trip is that everyone gets to reconnect you know, obviously they're not your real sister or brother, but over time you sort of develop that relationship where it feels like that a little bit. So connecting with them and then uh, with the Bill parents was, uh, was great. Jake was a big boy, and in two years he turned into a big man when he came back out of, out of the program. We met Chad and the whole family when they drove here from Ridgefield, Connecticut. Chad and, and Trent Frederick is the other young man we had. They were just really nice kids. It's a little bit weird living in you know almost a stranger's house. The the first couple mon months are definitely a little bit different. As time went on, they were they were you know like my parents out there, and, and you know you talk to them all the time, and, and uh, you know it was a pretty special thing. John lived with us for about 21 months. For our younger kids, it was like having a celebrity move into the house. He became you know sort of a almost adopted son to us. Through that relationship, uh, you get out what you put in. You know, empty the dishwasher or just uh, be home for dinner every night. You know, helps the relationship blossom and, uh, you know, you get a lot closer with your billets. He was really dedicated to the program, dedicated to his studies. Joy to be around and watching him grow. I think uh, it's a really important relationship, you know, especially when you're away from home. Uh, for us, it was a life-changing experience. Um, we, we felt like we gained a son out of this. For my boys, it was really like having a role model who skated at a really elite level um, in the bedroom next door. Friday night at Michigan's historic Yost Arena, and a big test awaits the Terriers of Boston University. Set the tone for the first five minutes. Crowd's gonna be all over the place. They're gonna be loud. It's gonna be an exciting atmosphere. Take them right out of it by just playing simple hockey for the first five minutes. Just do what you're supposed to do in the moment. Live in the moment. We're gonna start JFK's line with Chad and Charlie. Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. It's our weekend. Let's go up in here, Red. Hey, let's go, Red. Hey, let's shut them up early. There it is! I actually think we got off to a good start, but you know, what killed us was they scored two quick goals on their first two power plays.
a little bit demoralizing, I think. Their, their goals came too easy. I think that can really affect a young team, you know, on top of the environment and the, you know, the, the crowd. We weren't able to get one. I thought if we had gotten one, I thought we were probably going to settle down and you know, have a chance, but we just weren't able to, to, to get that one, which I thought could have opened the floodgates. Not the start the Terriers were looking for this weekend. The good news is that game two of the series is now less than 24 hours away. Coming up next, the Terriers get a chance to show their teeth. Stay with us. The BU Terriers are on the road for a weekend series against the Michigan Wolverines. And while road trips can mean tougher games, they also give the team a chance to bond. You know, both of us have had uh, really good experiences so far, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of credit goes to our, our leadership and our captain, uh, Doyle Summerby, who's, you know, made the transition really easy on uh, all the freshmen and making us feel like, uh, you know, we're part of the team. Everybody's on the same level on the team, and, and obviously we, we respect the older guys, but they treat us really well, so that's been awesome. You always look forward to uh, playing big time programs uh, in their building on the road, and uh, I know everyone on the team is going to be excited to to play in that atmosphere tonight. It's going to be a, a great crowd. I think everyone's pretty fired up to play in an environment like this. So I think, you know, I think the biggest thing is trying to keep things under control at the beginning when the crowd's probably going to be going. And if we keep things simple from the start, I think it will help us as the game goes on. Terriers lost game one on Friday night, which makes winning on Saturday even more of a challenge and more important. Boys, we gave them way too much respect, way too much respect. The environment was better last weekend. This game's already been decided from what you were thinking about, what you envisioned, how physical you're willing to be, and at the pace you want to play. Let's go, boys. Boys, right off the bat. Hey, it's there, it's there, it's there. We got a whole game left, boys. Let's go. Oh. Bye, bye, bye. In being physical, we don't lose sight of playing hockey. Let's build on what happened that last shift, and let's go send a message the first five minutes. All right? Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Hey, let's build off this. Build off this. Hopper, right side, Fabro, Fabro to the circle. Shot to goal, Dante Fabro. Oh, there we go, guys, there we go. At the end of two hard-fought physical periods, it's BU1. Michigan won, setting up the third period to be the most intense of the weekend. Hey, come on boys, let's feel good about the end here. Let's feel good about our effort here, let's go. There you go, set it up, nice play, nice job. Hey, we're getting chances, boys. Greenway centers one in front of the goal. Charlie McAvoy, and give the Terriers a two to one lead with 10.56 left. Here we go, boys. Here we go, Greener. K with a move in front tonight in the backhand follow up Greenway and a goal. Yeah! There we go, boys! There we go! Freshman Patrick Harper's goal late in the third period seals the win for BU and gives the Terriers an important two points on the road trip. Nice tip. There we go, boys! Let's 
That's a big win, boys. Best of luck. Best of luck. Great game. Best of luck, man. I'm not surprised by our effort, and therefore I'm not surprised by the result. Because when we play with that type of grit, and that type of intelligence, and that type of determination and resiliency, we're going to beat anybody. That's a good hockey team. That's a really good hockey team. This has to be who we are. That's a big win. It's a good win, and I want to enjoy it. Let's get on that fancy charter plane. Good job, kid. Bobo, great job, kid. Good job there, Greeny. Coming up, Brandon Hickey shares some fun facts about Boston University. Grab your notebook. BU Terriers All Access continues after this. Again, coming up the middle, he's got time and space, and he scores! John Hines! Well, it had a, a huge impact on my life when I was at, at Boston University. You know, having the opportunity to be with uh, Coach Parker and, and the coaching staff, had great relationships with those guys. And the transition for BU player John Hines to BU coach John Hines happened rather quickly. It's actually an interesting story. I had just got done playing, and then uh, Chris Drury was the captain, so he went to uh, Coach Parker and basically said, hey, I think Heinze wants to get into coaching. Would it be an opportunity? And I knew going into, into Boston University, I wanted to coach and teach. Uh, I was in the School of Education, so I knew that was the path I wanted to go down. But then my experiences at Boston University, being around Coach Parker, it influenced me and, and kind of really steered me more in the direction of coaching versus teaching. Those years at, uh, at Boston University, we were in the, in the NCAA tournament all the time. We played in so many meaningful games, um, and it was really special to be part of that 95 national championship team, particularly being from Rhode Island and in your hometown. It always makes it extra special. But a national championship for Boston University. It's done. It was a winning program. It was, it was one that attracted you because, you know, just of the fan support, Walter Brown Arena, you know, the opportunity to play in the bean pot and, and, and have the opportunity to get to the NCAA tournament was all attractive to, I think, motivated players. You know, and it was a program that sold you on if you got there, uh, you were going to get better and you were going to get coached. And it was, a, it was a great culture and a great environment. And I think the coaching staffs have done a tremendous job. Coach Parker and uh, Coach Quinn, you know, they're engaging personalities, the assistant coaches, uh, have done a fantastic job and it's great that we have those guys uh, running our program. Well having the opportunity to be around uh, a successful program, what it takes to win, the work ethic, the commitment, the type of teams you have to have, it really gave you a good perspective on, on, on what it means to, to be a coach, to be a teacher and, and to be successful in anything. The lessons that you learn from that and the camaraderie you get I think really set all of us up for life after hockey. Johnson the trailer, O'Connell across, Heinz scores! Great play, O'Connell to Hines. Shifting. Gonna deal it back, Hickey. With a slapper and a goal, Brandon Hickey buries it. Hey, I'm Brandon Hickey, defenseman for the BU Terriers. Woo! And I'd like to tell you some interesting facts about BU that you may or may not know. BU sits across the street from Fenway Park on the banks of the Charles River. Some famous BU alums include Jason Alexander, Gina Davis, Faye Dunaway, Rosie O'Donnell, Julianne Moore, Howard Stern, and Leonard Nimoy. Mr. Spock, did you know that the Boston University Bridge is one of only a few spots in America where a plane can fly over a car, driving over a train, traveling over a boat? What, the, what do you want me to do there? The fourth floor of the Sheraton Hall, also known as the Writing Majors Dorm, is supposedly haunted. Yep, haunted by playwright and Nobel Prize winner Eugene O'Neill. He died in room 401 when the building was one of the earliest Sheraton hotels. Resident students claim that the lights flicker and the elevators radically stop at the fourth floor. Civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. earned his doctorate degree from BU in 1955. And he won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. Inventor of the telephone, Alexander Graham Bell, conducted a lot of experiments at BU when he was a professor here. How about a good workout? We have a state-of-the-art fitness center on campus and a lazy river. Near the BU beach, is the famous whale sculpture. The full whale can only be seen at a certain angle. If 
you like to eat like I do, the West Campus Dining Hall is famous for their great food. Welcome to Lobster Night! Come on in, Lobster Night! And once a year, they host a lobster night. Aganis Arena, where the best college hockey is played, is named after Harry Aganis. Harry, who was considered one of the greatest athletes ever, was a talented football and baseball athlete for BU and ended up playing for the Red Sox, who play right down the street from BU. Scarlet and white are BU's school colors, and BU's mascot? His name's Rhett. Why, you ask? Because in the Gone Out the Wind quote, nobody loves Scarlet more than Rhett. My BU Terriers have won 30 bean pots. We own that tournament. You should come to a game and see why. I'll be there. Sends it back. Shot there by Hickey and a goal. Brandon Hickey whips it up top. Jordan Greenway is a big part of BU's potent offense. Coming up next, the sophomore forward talks about his game and establishing squatters rights just outside the crease. Stay with us. Uh, my name is Doyle Summerby. I'm from Marblewood, Massachusetts. Something that no one knows about me is that I love to cook. All the time, every meal, whenever I can, I'm, I'm in the kitchen trying new stuff. My favorite type of movie is probably comedy or action. My favorite movie, probably The Mighty Ducks. Watch that all the time growing up. Favorite NHL player, Colton Preco, the young guy in St. Louis. My favorite food, uh, seafood, uh, lobster and salmon. Favorite musical artist, Probably Bieber. If I was stranded on a desert island with one person, it would be Connor Lacouve. He's out of his mind. Someone could play me in a movie, it would be Ben Affleck. The thing that makes me the most angry is when I get hit with a shot somewhere I don't have protection. Favorite thing to do in the summers, uh, I love to golf and uh, just boat. Favorite zoo animal, big fan of the gorillas. Favorite holidays, Thanksgiving. Uh, last year we had nine of the boys plus my family, so. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. If I had a warning to label, it'd be the nicest guy at BU. JFK right back, got Greenway down, set to go, to the goal! Jordan Greenway! Meet Jordan Greenway. Greenway, so nice for you, buddy! The six foot six, 225 pound sophomore is a power forward that plays the game with attitude. But before the puck drops, he likes to keep it loose. Yeah, I know I'm pretty relaxed game day. Just kind of stay, stay loose, don't really tense up. Off the ice, he's definitely a loose, uh, a loose guy and definitely someone who, who the guys like to have in the locker room. He kind of takes things off of a serious note. Like everyone's always fired up, jumping around. You know, making jokes, but when it's game time, you know, everyone kind of buckles down and, 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 and gets serious. Here we go, boys. Here we go, boys. A combination of ability, size, and skill make him a scoring threat every time he hits the ice, and he makes his living parked out in front of the opposing net. Oh, you're going to call me too? And on the ice, he's obviously a presence, you know, with his size and his strength and his ability. He's, uh, he's a real special player, and he's... He's someone who you want on your team. You don't want to be playing against them. Oh, are you okay? Are you okay? He draws so much attention. You know, I mean, rarely do you see one guy on, but usually two and sometimes three, which obviously creates a lot of space for his line mates. Playing with Jordan is definitely a treat. He's such a big body presence out there that you know it creates a lot of room for me. And he gets in on the forecheck, and really from the dots down, he's he's pretty dominant. All I gotta really do is get the puck uh, down low, win battles, create space for them to when they have the puck on their stick, it's hard to get it off. Come on, buddy, learn how to play D. Learn how to play D. You know, you watch our team closely, usually when a whistle blows and we're in the offensive zone and he's on the ice, there's a scrum and guys are coming after him and pushing and shoving and saying things to him. Jordan can be a punishing force to opponents, a hockey version of the Hulk, and the on-ice chatter, it's all in good fun. Yeah, there you go, buddy. You're doing well today. You have been doing well. Oh, the chatter. Yeah, I love that. I love, just like to hear what people come at me with, you know? I'll keep scoring, buddy. Let's go. I'll keep scoring. What, you too? You too? Because they're coming for me. I'll stay out. You got to save me. I won't do anything if you're there. He's certainly a target. Uh, not only because of the way he plays, but I think because of his size. I think people are always, always measuring themselves against him. 
And if you can take down King Kong, then you know you're proving to the college hockey world that you're, you know, you're you're a player. Crashing hard was Greenway and BC didn't like it one bit. <laughs> you have to have a nasty side. This isn't, you know, this is a game that's played in a small area that's fast and there's big physical players in there. Just do whatever I can to kind of get them rattled, you know, get them riled up, whatever the case is. And like I said, it kind of gets me fired up too. So I'm just doing it now you know, for my benefit. And now a jump for Greenway. Greenway is in alone. He's got a step and he scores. Jordan Greenway. You know, we understood the role he was going to have to play for us moving forward to, in order for us to have the success that we want to have and the success he wants to have as an individual. Two hands, take pucks to the net. Don't think a guy can defend you, they can't. The Minnesota Wild picked Greenway in the second round of the 2015 NHL Draft, an accomplishment Jordan is quite proud of. It was an unbelievable experience, you know, getting, getting picked by them. My whole family was there. I hope one day I can be there. I think he realizes what he's capable of doing. He's always a guy that's kind of fancied himself as a big playmaker, slowly becoming more of a goal scorer, at least his side of it mentally. I just got to dominate in those areas. You know, no one can be better than me at it in, in order for me to get to the next level. Puck is down low, puck to the front of the cage, shot in front, puck oh! goes to the goal! <laughs> The clock is wound down on this episode of BU Terriers All Access. Make sure to tune in next time when we go behind the scenes to give you a look at what it means to play BU hockey.